So in this module, we're going to see what's unfortunately a bit of a negative result. We're going to look more closely at the primitive of bit commitment that you just discovered. And I'll give you the main idea showing that it's impossible to realize this primitive. Let's first recall what bit commitment is. So at a high level, bit commitment is just a way for user Alice to transmit a bit B to user Bob. Bob has no input, Alice has no output. Now the security is defined in two phases, corresponding to phases of the protocol. There should be a commit phase followed by an open phase. And the security requirements are first the hiding property, which is that at the end of the commit phase, Bob still has no information at all about Alice's bit B. So that's at this stage here. And then there's the binding property, which is that at the same point, Alice can no longer change her mind. So in the commit phase, she gets to decide if she wants to commit to B or B prime, she can commit to whatever she wants. But once both parties have reached that stage here, Bob still doesn't know anything about B, but Alice can't change her mind any longer. And so there's a subsequent phase called open through which Bob is going to end up learning the value B that Alice committed to in the commit phase. So why study bit commitment? Well, two things. As we already saw a few modules ago, oblivious transfer can be used to implement any multi-party function. So oblivious transfer implies bit commitment. In that sense, it's a weaker primitive. And if oblivious transfer is impossible, maybe bit commitment would be possible. But why would we care about bit commitment? Well, it turns out, as you saw also a couple videos ago, that bit commitment can be used to implement OT in the quantum case. Meaning that if you only allow yourself classical protocols, and if you know how to implement bit commitment, that's not sufficient to implement oblivious transfer. So it's not enough to implement any function. Classically, bit commitment is strictly weaker than general multi-party computation. But quantumly, as we saw, if you can implement bit commitment, then you can implement everything. The idea is to look at the state of Bob in between the commit and open phases. So let's chop up the protocol here in between the two phases. Let's imagine this is a quantum protocol and let's call psi AB the joint state of Alice and Bob at that stage of the protocol. Now this psi depends on the party's inputs and their actions. Only Alice has an input. So we actually have two states, psi zero and psi one, depending on B. Okay, so now let's look at what the security requirements are asking. First, there's the hiding property. The hiding property says Bob should not learn any information about B at the end of the commit phase. What this means is that the state of his whole system should be completely independent of the bit B. Now Bob's system we can describe by the reduced density matrix Ho B on his system, which is the partial trace with respect to Alice's system of the state Psi B, which is on both of them. All right. And so the hiding property says that Ho0 should be equal to Ho1 because if they're a little bit different, then there would be a measurement that slightly distinguishes them. And in this way, Bob would obtain some information about Alice's input. So if the protocol is hiding, these two reduced densities should be the same. All right, but now we know what it means for two pure states to have the same reduced density on the system. It means we can apply Ullmann's theorem. And if we apply Ullmann's theorem, this tells us that there exists a unitary U doesn't depend on anything on Alice's system such that if you apply U on Alice and the identity on Bob, this is going to map the state, let's say psi zero to the state psi one. And this is a unitary which acts at this stage of the protocol here, which means that in between the commit and open phase, it's possible for Alice to apply a unitary that maps the state that corresponds to a commitment of zero to the state that corresponds to a commitment of one, meaning that she can change her mind between these two phases. So what we've seen is that hiding implies not binding. These two re security requirements contradict each other. And as a consequence, bit commitment is not possible even in the quantum case. Too bad. Now, in fact, things are even worse than this. Let me just give you a sketch of an idea showing that there is no perfectly secure, non-trivial computation of multi-party functions 
in the very strong notion of security that we saw a few lectures ago based on simulators. The idea is going to be the same for the impossibility of bit commitment that we just saw. So let's look at a general function, f. For simplicity, I'll take Alice and Bob to have the same output. So fa is equal to fb here. Alice has an input x, Bob has an input y. They should both output f of x and y. And now let me imagine that I manage to construct a secure protocol for this function f, secure against this honest Bob. Let's remember what this means. It means that for any dishonest Bob, there should exist a simulator that here I'm calling adversary that takes the same input as Bob, produces the same output, but the only thing the simulator has access to is the ideal functionality. Now I claim that if the protocol is secure against any dishonest Bob, then as a consequence, it is the case that Alice can compute the function f of x and y for any input x of her choice. So she can also compute f of x prime y for any x prime different from x. And so of course in that case the protocol is not secure. For instance if you think about the AND function, it means that Alice can always pretend her input is x prime equals 1, then she learn the AND of x prime and y, which means she gets to learn y, even if y is a zero, which contradicts the security for the AND function. So this should not be possible. Unfortunately, if we require our protocol to be secure in this simulation paradigm against this honest bobs, then this is what is going to happen. There's a big downside for multi-party computation, but it is the case. Let me just give you the idea of why. So it's similar to bit commitment. We can look at the state of the protocol here, psi, x, y on Alice and Bob. And look in this simulation paradigm at Bob's reduced densities, rho b, depending on x and y star. And now what you can argue are two things. You can show that if the protocol is secure against this honest Bob, implies that now if a potentially malicious Alice is interacting with the honest Bob, there exists a purification of the protocol in which Alice has a state such that she can measure one of the additional registers of the purification to obtain a y star, not necessarily equal to Bob's input y, remember that here I'm thinking of honest Bob, but such that two things hold. First of all, it is the case that f of x y is equal to f of x y star. So think of this y star here as a random y star that the simulator would have been chosen to simulate a certain malicious Bob. That's the first property and it's going to follow from similar kind of indistinguishability arguments that we had for bit commitment. And then the second property, which is a bit more tricky to establish but can be established, is that the distribution of y star is independent from Alice's input x. But if this is the case, then it means that the first property should hold not only for x, but also for any other possible input x prime that Alice should have. So as a consequence of these two, we get that this magical input y star is such that f of x prime y star is equal to f of x prime y for every x prime. So in a way, Alice has been able to obtain a proxy y star for Bob's input, such that if she uses y star in place of Bob's input to the function f, for any input of her choice, she's going to get the right answer. So she can compute all these values f of x prime y, and thus the protocol is broken. So I haven't shown you the details here. They're a bit tricky uh, to establish, but it's, it's really similar ideas to bit commitment. It's a very strong impossibility result for multi-party computation, even in the case of quantum protocols. Now that impossibility result applies to protocols that have perfect security or near perfect security. But you can still ask the question if there wouldn't exist some functionalities, oblivious transfer, bit commitment, maybe others, that can be obtained, constructed with somehow stronger guarantees using quantum protocols than classical protocols. And this turns out to be the case. In a couple videos later, we're going to see such an example which is called coin tossing, where even though you can't do it perfectly, there is an advantage to quantum communication.